Hello guys, I want to, you really to meet one incredible person here and uh, he will introduce himself and the whole goal for this interview is to show you an example of perseverance and uh, internal strength. So with this, uh, let's deal to talk to you guys. Well, my name is Stephen Simmons. I'm uh, the uh, uh, IT program chair here at uh, ITT Technical Institute and uh, I uh, was in a car accident when I was 17 years old and I broke my neck in that car accident and had a spinal cord injury. So what that means is that from a broken neck, most people think that you're paralyzed from your neck down or you're paralyzed from your waist down. And in reality, it's a question of the spinal cord in your neck has different levels. C3 controls your diaphragm, C4 controls your biceps or your shoulder, excuse me, your C5 controls your biceps, C6 and 7 control the outer part of your arms and your fingers, so I don't have the use of my fingers and I don't have the use of my triceps to be able to straight, straighten my arm. So my injury is actually at the C6, C7 level where the vertical, uh, vertebra are. And uh, from there you've got T1, your thoracic, T2, T3, just layers going all the way down and then lumbar is where your legs are. So with the spinal cord injury, um, it's where I don't have any sensation or function because of the nerves don't activate the muscles. So, like I said, I don't have the use of my fingers, so I've had to learn how to do things in life with that. And uh, some limitations to minor things like I can't lift my wrist up, so moving my arms out and around uh, are a little difficult. And um, it's not just not having the use of my fingers, it's the problem, but it's also grasping things and, and being able to, to manage things on a daily basis and you don't realize how much you really do use your fingers, even your opposable thumbs, uh, how much it really is a, a big part of your everyday life to be able to work with these things. So uh, I was injured, I was 17 years old, uh, I was uh, on my way to a drum corps rehearsal and uh, which is like a marching band and a uh, car just hired a plane. Car uh, slid, rolled over, wasn't that bad of an accident, but it was bad enough to malalign my neck and cause a spinal cord injury. So uh, after my injury, I did uh, six months of rehab and uh, immediately went right back into my plans of going to college. And uh, initially I was gonna get my degree in music. And uh, the doctors all told me that I probably wouldn't be able to play a musical instrument again. Well, fortunately, my main instrument was trombone, and it's the only instrument that's actually got a slide, so I didn't have to use my fingers to be able to work it. So I, uh, the year after I was injured, I started at school. I originally uh, was supposed to go uh, away to Florida. I lived in Connecticut. Uh, so the plans changed, and uh, you know, you just gotta sometimes roll with the punches and, and give what you've got. Uh, utilize what you have. So. Uh, I went to school nearby where I lived and um, earned my degree. I did get it in music. Um, I uh, did it with uh, voice and on uh, trombone. So uh, from there I worked with that and uh, also got a degree in secondary education with teaching. Um, a lot of things that I've had to fight along the way, in fact, uh, sometimes with um, people are one of my biggest uh, competitors that, I, that I've got to go with and, and it's not so much where uh, just a, a lack of understanding but I've actually had people where they didn't think that I'd be able to do my job so uh, I had one instructor who uh, was very old-fashioned uh, quite advanced in age who uh, thought that uh, because I was in a wheelchair I wouldn't be able to teach students so uh, I had to fight that and uh, had to get the university behind me and uh, just about everybody on the panel, in fact everybody on the panel except for this one person, uh, was trying to fight against me. So I made sure that I got through that and I uh, was able to student teach. Um, I got my degree, it was a double major, like I said, in uh, music and in secondary education. And uh, I decided to move to Florida and it's something that I've always wanted to do. I was supposed to come down with a family member and she decided at the last minute that she didn't want to move. So I still persevered in this and I said, okay, I am going to move to Florida. That's where I feel I belong. So I just up and moved. I called ahead. I arranged to have a home health aid because I'm not able to uh, take care of myself with being able to get up in the morning and get dressed and take care of myself. So I hired an aid remotely. I hired um, 
the people, the nursing that I needed. I also made sure that I got an apartment and uh, got some help to move the stuff down. And I just decided that that's what I was going to do. So made all the plans and planning ahead to make sure that everything was set. Came down here, had everything in place. I did have a friend who was down here who also helped me out. Um, and then from there, it's just one step in front of the other to get to where I am today. Um, I started out with teaching in a private high school and I just had a bachelor's degree to today. I'm the chair of the School of IT at ITT Tech and I've got five degrees. Um, I've got one bachelor's degree. I've got three master's degrees. I've got my PhD, uh, all but my dissertation, and I'm working on my second PhD right now. Uh, my first PhD is in education, and this PhD is it's actually a doctorate, it is going to be in IT. So, where you start and where you finish is completely up to you. You just have to decide this is what I'm going to do. It's not allowing something to get in your way, it's not allowing anybody to get in your way, it's not allowing anything to get in your way you need to decide that this is what you're going to do and that's what's going to happen. So you figure out a way to make it happen, you don't give up, you just take one step at a time, one day at a time, and before I knew it, one degree turned into two degrees, turned into three degrees, and I kept getting them, and it's because that's what I wanted. You know, everybody collects something, I just decided I was gonna collect graduate degrees. Um, and uh, each degree has helped me get to where I wanted to be professionally. And I can teach classes in business, I can teach classes in IT, I can teach classes in education, and I'm able to constantly expand where I can go. So figuring out where that goal is to do that, and I, I just recently heard a, uh, a saying, and I, and I hope I remember it correctly, but it has something to do with um, uh, making plans, or having goals without plans is nothing more than a wish. And you've got to decide that that's where you're going to go. If your goal is to get a degree and to get a job, that's fine. That's a good short-term goal. But you need to start looking further than that. What are you going to do in five years? What are you going to do in 10 years? So taking that, not letting anything get in your way, is having a plan and stepping and going through that. Whether you do it with help, accept help where you can get it. And if you don't have help, then you figure out what you're going to do in order to make it happen. So, bottom line is that, you know, it's up to you to make this happen. Every time that you go into a class, it's not about what is this teacher going to teach me, but what is it that I can learn from this class. Not just what the teacher's giving you, not just what the book is giving you, but what are you doing in between the classes to continue to learn. All right? It's not about what you are getting, what somebody is giving you, it's about what you're reaching out there and grabbing for yourself. This is incredible. It's, it's amazing, really. The, the journey you just described, the whole path to success is just amazing. And from that perspective, you know, we all have our own limitations. Like in my case, you see like speech impairment, like accent. Well, could you maybe just give some examples how, what was that internal drive, how, how you overcame these difficulties? Um, you know, we talk about, you know, an amazing journey and, you know, being able to get through these things and, and I don't see it that way. Quite often I, I hear people say that it's like, well, I'm proud of what you've been able to achieve and, and in the back of my mind I'm thinking, why? This is what I wanted to do. It doesn't matter that I'm in a wheelchair. It's something I would have done whether or not I was in a wheelchair. So, you know, maybe I need to, to, to get it into my head and it's like, yeah, I have been able to accomplish more because of what I've had to go through to get it, but it doesn't change what anybody else can do. If I can inspire somebody to do better because I was able to do it, I'm glad to do that. But I didn't do this for anybody's help, anybody's accolades, anybody's, um, uh, for, for them to, to tell me that I'm doing well, I did it because this is what I wanted to do and I don't want people to stop me and I'm not going to let them stop me, so I figure out a way to do it. <laughs> that is incredible, and again, like in terms of that internal strength, you know, sometimes we all have uh, different moods, and sometimes you feel depressed. Like, uh, does this happen to you? How do you overcome this? 
I, again, it, it's really, you know, I, I hate to say the mind over matter thing, but it really is about making a decision. You know, uh, I've just told you just, just very basic layers of things I've had to go through, but there was a time uh, about four years ago that I spent two years in the hospital because I had pressure wounds and I couldn't sit up into my wheelchair. So I had to lay on my side, I couldn't put any pressure on there, but I decided that I was still gonna work and I was working from my hospital bed. And people look at me, it's like, you were working from your hospital bed. It's like, what else was I going to do? I wanted to make sure that when I got out of that situation that I was gonna have someplace to go. I needed to have money to do it. So I was working, I was doing, I was expanding my mind. And you know, I, I constantly take that and go to the next level. So it's not about all these obstacles that get in your way. It's about making that decision to say, I am going to get to that next level, so what are you going to do to do it? You've got to find out what is your passion, what is your inspiration. Sometimes that inspiration for me is anger to get through it. Sometimes it's it's just that 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 perseverance that, that you see it and it just you've got to find a way to get through it. And whether you go around it, whether you go over it, whether you go through it, you've got to have a plan that once you get to the other side, what are you going to do? You've got to look beyond where that first step is that you're going. You've got to see 20 steps ahead of you to figure out what are you going to do when you get to that point, even though you've still got a few mountains that you've got to climb to do it. So that strength that you build, do you remember yourself when it happened, like when you were 17, and how was your reaction? And did it really, like you build that strength, you really develop that resistance to you know, with external pressures and ability to overcome the issues? Um, you know, like I said, I was 17 and I was an only child. I didn't have much family. Um, so, you know, uh, I've always sort of been a loner. You know, I've uh, moved around a lot, so didn't have that, that friend structure that people develop when they're young. Um, I don't know if it was anything that, that just snapped and, you know, people say, well, how long were you depressed for? I wasn't ever depressed. I just picked up the pieces and kept going. So, you know, you've got to decide that, you know, it, it's all based down on your decision. Um, people that, that stagnate and, and don't do anything, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. You know, that's why I'm in a, in a manual chair. I don't want to be in a power chair because if I don't use my arms, I'm going to lose them. Same thing with your mind. It's the same thing with your desire. Once you stop desiring things, once you stop getting to that next goal, once you stop exercising your mind, that's when it starts to stagnate and you're not doing anything. You've got to get up and keep on going. That's the bottom line there. There's no stopping, you have to keep going. Well, I guess about know, this exercise of mine, yes, we, will let, we will leave it for the next uh, video. Yes. But it would be just incredible to know how you do it. I, you know, I really want to know because you, you live in this life and always something happens. And, you get to the wall and then, you know, you sometimes uh, drop your hands and somehow, you know, you find that strength to get up and to do what you're supposed to. Well, it's about so, thinking through it though, you know, it's like you mentioned hitting a wall. You know, the, a lot of times I, I tell people the difference between a quadriplegic where I am, where I don't use my fingers, and paraplegic is in a state of mind. A, a paraplegic will, if there's a, a wall that's across his path, He'll slam into that wall until he knocks that wall down and go through it. That's just what paraplegics do. Quadriplegics need to arrange to have that wall removed before he even gets there. So it is about thinking ahead and it's about thinking about what are you going to do when you get these things. So that's the bottom line to doing that. And then you can talk about different paths and things to do, but it's just right now the focus on the decision to make it happen. Incredible. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. All right. Thank you.